These days, it's cool to call yourself an entrepreneur, but the real entrepreneurs strive for continuous improvement, innovation, and willing to take risks of detrimental proportions. Join me as we meet the people that are making this happen. One by one, they are sharing the story of their journey as an American entrepreneur. In this episode of An American Entrepreneur, we're going to meet a lady that left the corporate world to start her own business. She decided to go into home staging and has been in business for six years now. We're going to visit a home she recently staged and she's going to share with us the story of her entrepreneurship journey. So come join me. I think you'll find her story not only interesting, but very inspiring. Hello, I'm Nidra with Marilyn's Charm Staging and welcome to my latest home staging project. Well, thanks for having me here, Deidre. You're welcome. So what do we have here? We're going to focus on the areas that I staged. Okay. Well, let's so uh, our second display. tour here. Here is the door wall dining room here. Okay, looks good. And here's the living room. This is a beautiful house. And here is the breakfast nook area. Is this a brand new home? It's not brand new, although it's not old, it may be six or seven years old. Okay, it looks brand new. What else do we have? And straight ahead, here is our primary bedroom. So you staged one bedroom, I guess, in the yes. living room, dining room area? Yes, the primary bedroom, because that's basically what potential buyers focus on. Okay, the makes sense. Room, dining room, kitchen, primary bedroom, bathroom. And of course, if the client wants to have additional area stage, they can opt to have a stage those. You gotta check out the bathroom here. It's a nice, spacious bathroom. Is this everything that you've staged? Yes. Okay. Looks really good. Yes, the agent was very clear that she only wanted the living room, dining room, breakfast nook, primary bedroom stage. And I guess obviously you leave these small rooms unstaged because it's kind of a moot point in it. Right, right. This Someone could use this room for an office. That looks really good. All right, so Nidra, introduce yourself and tell us a little about your business here. I am Nidra with Effortless Charm Staging, and what we do is we provide home staging services throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We provide vacant home staging services. That is for properties where there aren't any people or any furniture in the property. We bring our own inventory to, for the most part, stage the main living areas. We also offer occupied services, which these are for people who are living in the home. What we do is we come in and we coach them on what to do to get the home ready for the market. So there's an in-person consultation that I do, and I also do online consultations. I'm also in the process of rolling out a DIY vacant home staging service, which is online where I 
guide people on how to stage a vacant property. Okay, so how long have you been in business? Or shall I say, when did you start this business? I've been in business for six years. Okay, what made you get into this business to begin with? Being in the corporate world, which I think a lot of people start businesses just being in corporate and realizing that although the jobs were great, I didn't get a chance to get outside of my comfort zone. I had my usual list of duties that I would take care of every single day. After about three months, six months, I would get bored. And I thought, well, I wanna do something that's me and something that is a bit more exciting. And that's when I just started brainstorming with people who know me and we basically came up with staging homes. Okay, so how, as far as starting this business, what all did it take to launch this business? Tell us about how you launched it. I launched it, I will tell you, I'm very lucky because there is a stager in the Dallas area who she's been staging for about 10 years. When I first started thinking of staging, I didn't know what it actually was. And I was sharing my ideas with someone that I work with, which at the time I worked for a mortgage company. He's married to an agent who knows a stager in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And she recommended through through her husband that I connect with this other stager. I reached out to her, read my first book, and I had a sense of how it worked, but I I kept learning. I would say the thing that worked for me is that I put a lot of focus and a lot of time on learning first. So which I'm research. so yes, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of learning. I asked a lot of questions. I joined several home staging Facebook groups and learn from people who were already doing it. I then went on to take formal training courses that has helped a lot. In addition to spending at least $50,000 to buy the furnishings to stage the properties. Well, how were you inspired to begin with to actually become an entrepreneur? Were you influenced by someone, relatives, family, friends? How did that start? To tell you the truth, I can't say that it's anyone that I was really looking at. I just wanted to do something other Different. than the, the typical corporate role where I go to the same job every day. I do the same duties every single day. I just wanted something that was me. And to tell you the truth, I am a person of service. And that's for whenever mm -hmm. I, I stage homes, that's me being a person of service. That can live for me through staging. I've done a lot of volunteer work. I am a member of, and I continue to serve on, in my Toastmasters club. I just, I get a lot out of serving people. I learn a lot whenever I serve people. Cause this is kind of like hospitality. Isn't it? Yes, it really truly is. And this is something that just came up. And I will also say that I'm very lucky because I am a certified project manager. When people think of home staging, they think of a pretty result, which that's all fine to see a perfectly staged home. The truth is this is project management. Is project management is business contracts, dealing with people and their very unique personalities, timelines, budgets, logistics, because I am very well managed already. A, a lot of those traits that I already have just carried over to staging homes well. But I will tell anyone, if you don't have at least $50,000 to get the furnishings, as well as just the patience to learn and the tenacity to keep going forward, then you will definitely be in for some surprises <laughs> that you will not well, be comfortable with. Well, with the, the furnishings you buy, I suppose you also rent a place to store them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And do you have any people working for you that actually do the moving or do you outsource that? How does that work? I do hire movers and again, I'm very, I'm very lucky because I was, when I was first starting, I didn't have all of the furnishings that I needed in order to stage three properties. I reached out to this other stager who I, I still love her to this day. And basically her whole rule was in order for me to rent furnishings from her, I, hide, I had to hire the movers that she always hires. Because he I doesn't thought, damage their stuff. Right. He knows what he needs to exactly. do. Exactly. Right? And so I basically hired her movers and that's when I found the mover that I hire often now. And he's just, he's been a complete blessing because unlike the typical mover that I have tried several times, 
he, he does understand that when he moves our furnishings to treat it like it's his, he's not careless with it. He doesn't break anything. He just, he's always looking at how he can make my job easier. And I'm very thankful because the typical residential mover does not think of that. They just move furnishings in and they leave. And he's, he's one where he wants to make sure that everything is right. If he puts a coffee table over an area rug, he's mindful that he needs to make sure that that coffee table is perfectly centered. Most movers don't think of that. And he also gets that, that this is a business and we generate revenue off of our, our furnishings. So if we can keep our furnishings in tip top shape, then we can reuse them. And if we can continue working, then he can continue working because we won't call him. Well, how do you price out a typical home staging project? It is based on the price point of the home, size of the home, furnishings chosen, and the number of rooms staged. And every property, it is completely different. This home, it is larger, and we did use furnishings that are a higher, higher level. So it costs more but it's just it's based on what they need how much is it if we need to bring in higher end furnishings lower end furnishings things like that well how long does it take to do a setup do a, a, a home stage setup and leave i guess what well, depends on how many rooms you're doing too right that definitely depends and then also the thing that can prolong it is if assembly if we have to do that, when we okay. get furnishings in, in boxes, the movers, they will have to assemble it. That takes longer. In all honesty, I take probably the greatest amount of time with the movers compared to when I actually stage. Because once they bring in the furnishings, they get everything set up. The only thing I have to do after that is hang artwork, add throw pillows, decor pieces, put those in place. And it's maybe, maybe a couple of hours. It takes a lot of time hanging artwork because we centered want to get everything that, yeah. centered and balanced. And that's not always easy. But when you do a home stage, I would suppose because you've got this mover, there's going to be a minimum cost, mm -hmm. no matter what. What's that minimum cost range usually? For him, it is a minimum of two hours. Okay, what's that cost though? It right now, I believe he's 150 per 150 hour. 150 an hour and the minimum is two hours. Right. When you pay him, do you pay him directly or do you wait till you get the money for the close or do, do they pay you before they close the home? How does this work? Once everything is brought in and set up, then I definitely pay him. Okay, but then how do you get paid? Do they pay you or do you get paid out of the escrow oh, from the, the sale? Oh, they pay me. In order to get on the calendar, they payment must be received up front. The full payment? Oh, yes. Okay. Because what we have found is that most people do not want to pay money. And this isn't a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. I've learned this from other stagers. If we're not careful, we're going to spend a great deal of time chasing money. And I'm not in the business of right. chasing money. And okay. that's... So we definitely have to get full payment up front or else people will leave you chasing your own money. What advice would you give someone that wanted to get in this business? For someone who wants to get in the business, I would say if you can shadow a, a stager in your area, definitely shadow them. If you can work for them, work for them. Understand this business first before coming up with, with all of this money to get into something that you may not have any any knowledge of. I've seen a lot of stagers leave this business. There are more stagers leaving than those that are coming in because what we typically find is that people think of staging and they conflate it with design and then decorating when they may not know anything about business, about how to come up with a contract that actually protects them. Those are things that they really truly need to know. Learn from other stagers as much as possible take your time and know that it can definitely overwhelm your life. Meaning when you're first starting out and you maybe have a storage unit or two, because you want to have some furniture on hand, a lot of us find that we have furniture, fur furniture in our homes. And if you have other family members who are living there, they may not appreciate that because they need to navigate and they need to move around they're not wanting to bump into cardboard boxes of sofas and right. accent chairs. There are people who have issues 
with that because their family members are just they that's not their thing right. so definitely look at all aspects of it what it takes to get it off the ground how much formal training will cost and if you can personally take on that kind of commitment because it is a lot larger than people think that it is it's so much more than just one thing it's not just a beautiful look it's everything that you go through in order to achieve that look and that part is not a fantasy at all oh i can imagine <laughs> so how do you do your marketing i market social media and i will tell you that i'm a little old-fashioned because i do like cold calling i think that there is for me there there's a lot of joy in cold calling it's one thing to post on social media which I don't really care for that because I have found that I get the greatest return whenever I pick up the phone and I call people. Because they, they actually get a feel for who you are. Exactly. I've done presentations to flippers, agents. I'm running Google ads. There's really nothing that I won't do in, in, in order to market because I know that if I have furniture and it's sitting in, in the warehouse, if it's sitting, it's costing me money right. and it needs to generate money. Well, I guess you network as well with mm -hmm. a lot of real estate agents. Yes, I do network. I attend open houses on Saturdays. So yes, I do Okay. That. So when is, what is your busiest times? I guess it doesn't matter. It could be a Monday or a Wednesday or Saturday. Would you have certain busier times than others? Generally speaking for the industry, it really gets busy around spring, spring and summer. That's when it's at the, at its busiest fourth quarter. It will slow down. Although for flippers who are flipping homes, they will hire stagers because they are flipping their homes during the fall, fall and winter season. So it's generally speaking spring, summer. And if you're working with flippers or doing a short term rental, those can take place fall and winter. Well, when you were talking about this formal training, could you tell us a little bit about that? How long did it take and how much did that cost? I've taken probably four or five formal training courses and I continue to learn and, and buy courses. I've done an occupied staging course, which like another staging course that I did, they were online. So I did an occupied training course that was online, a vacant training course that was online. I did one that was in person and that was three days and I had to travel to it. So it just, it depends on the course and how hands-on it is. If you're doing any kind of vacant staging training, I highly recommend doing it in person because you want to be able to think through and even talk through the different nuances that you're going to deal with because you will deal with those same nuances on staging day. Well, as far as getting your furniture, you know, furniture is so expensive. Mm -hmm. Do you go get brand new furniture or do you are very highly selective maybe of some used pieces? What kind of furniture are you getting, generally speaking? New or used? So for staging, we typically use neutral furniture. Beige, off-white, white. We can get them. There are different ways to get them, meaning you don't have to go out and buy retail. We can buy wholesale. Oh, really? If, okay. Yes, we can buy wholesale, but I will say the different wholesale vendors, they have their different requirements. So the thing about wholesale buying is if you do it, you have to make sure that, that your demand is at a point where you can give that wholesale vendor the money that it needs to buy the furniture that you are looking to buy. So there's wholesale. There's also buying from other stagers. Stagers in the area, whenever they're selling their furniture i've purchased from them i've rented from them there's facebook marketplace craigslist so there are different ways to get it there are stagers who whenever they go out of business they sell inventory i know a stager who just recently closed her business sold all of her inventory and for people who wanted to buy it they could buy it well have you ever sold your furniture or shall I say has someone ever gone and looked at a home and said, I love this home. I'll make this offer, including the furniture. Yes. And then they, I guess you work that out with the owners and decide what you want, or do you already have that figured out going in? For the most part, I have it figured out because I do have an inventory management system where I have all of those numbers calculated. 
If they want to buy it, then yes, I can easily come up with a number for them. So okay, yes. I bet that's really nice to be able to do, isn't it? Just kind it of, is. you, don't, you don't have to unstage or destage. Exactly, exactly. Okay, what advice would you give someone in general that wanted to start a business regardless of what that business is? If you wanna start a business regardless of what the business is, make sure you have a passion for business. Meaning it's great to have an idea of starting a business because you like something. At the end of the day, there are going to be tasks and things that come along with that business that you will have to deal with. And if you don't want to deal with those other businessy things that most people find mundane and boring, then you may not enjoy that business. I think that if you enjoy doing something and you want to continue enjoying it, keep it as a hobby. When you turn it into a business, then that's when you're opening Pandora's box. And we all know how that can be, but oh, yeah. it's definitely full of surprises when you go into a business and you just have to know that that's your thing. And if you have a thick skin, then that helps too, because you're oh, going yeah, to deal imagine. with, you're going to deal with some very different personalities. Well, what's the biggest challenge that you go through in this industry that you could share with somebody and how do you resolve that challenge? The biggest challenge, I would say being very smart about the people that I work with because people are very sensitive whenever it comes to spending money and the topic of money is a trigger for a lot of people. What I have found is that I want to work with people who are really truly meaning to have their home stage and they're ready to pay. They have no problem signing contracts. Anyone who tends to be skittish when it comes to contracts and, and payments, they may not be my target client. Do business with people who are willing to do good business with you. If they're not willing to do good business, then you may wanna rethink that situation. Well, what other plans do you have on the horizon for your business? My DIY, okay, vacant well, home staging. That. Yes, that's something that I am, I will be rolling it out very soon. It is a system that's been tested for 10 years. There's a stager in Canada that I'm actually training with her and I'm getting everything set up and getting the automated emails. I get into things like that, automating emails because home staging is such a project. I can't manually do everything all the time. I have to get into automating and that's something that I can do because, you know, I come from a corporate background where I've dealt with systems and mm -hmm. so I, it's not pretty, but at the same time I can deal with automating things so that way I'm not going crazy. <laughs> well, Nidra, I can't think of any other questions. Can you think of anything you'd like to share? I would like to share that staging, this is one of the things that we deal with in the industry with a lot of people who don't really know what staging is because it's so new. Staging is different from design and is different from decorating. Meaning when we stage, we stage for the broad audience of buyers and our furniture, it tends to be neutral colored. When it comes to decorating, that is more for the person who's living in the property, their own personal taste sense. and what they want to see. You can bring in as much color as you want to. You can bring in red, blues, greens, browns, and it's totally okay because it's for the person living in that property. Design is very similar. The only thing with it is that you may be knocking out a wall to create more, more space in a living area. Design also, it focuses on the person who's living in the property. Oftentimes when people hire stagers, they relate to us as though we're decorators and designers, as though we're going to decorate the property for them, not realizing that we're staging it to draw everyone from all walks of life. Right, and also too, I guess you take difficult designed rooms that have weird niches or whatever, and you set it up such that it takes confusion away from people that come look at the home. Exactly, exactly. We, for the most part, focus on the main living areas. And if I stage any guest bedrooms, so far it's been guest bedrooms that are oddly shaped or they, or they have a weird cut or 
it's set up in a way to where if a potential buyer walks in it, they will immediately wonder, what do I do with this room? Because it's, it's too small, it has a weird shape. And we take all of the guesswork out for them. That way they will know the, this is a possibility for you and you can still live and function in that space. Well, what are the statistics or do you know of the statistics or is anyone keeping up with it in the industry? I'm sure there would be, but a home that sells, that's staged and a home that sells not staged, how long are they on the market? I will tell you homes that are not staged, they will stay on the market longer because when someone walks into a vacant home and there's no furniture, they don't always know what to do with the, with the space. So staged homes, they sell a lot faster at least 20% faster. And if the interest rates are low, then the seller is bound to get multiple offers over asking price. So that's another good reason to, to stage. Well, sounds really cool. Well, Nidra, I appreciate you so much for coming on, sharing your story. And I have no doubt that you're gonna grow and be a giant staging business here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Thanks Thank a lot you. for coming. Thank, Thank you, you so right. much. I love how Nidra explored ideas with friends until she found the kind of business she wanted to start. When she decided on home staging, she read books and met with people in the industry. And she took formal training classes so she could be better prepared for this new endeavor. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspired you to someday start your own business. I'm Curtis Mulberg. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.